Normally, snow is spread across the planet. It falls quietly, covering mountains, fields, and cities. But what if every snowflake on the ground and in the sky all dropped in one spot? Let's blame a mischievous snow wizard with a teleporter. First, we need to ask how much water is locked in all of the world's snow. Scientists measure snow not by depth, but by snow water equivalent, that being the water content you'd get if you melted it. Current data shows Earth's snow holds about 4,500 cubic kilometers of water. This includes all settled snow and the constant contribution of snow from storms. One cubic kilometer of water is a billion cubic meters, enough to fill 400,000 Olympic swimming pools. But how much does this water weigh? If we do the math, the world's snow weighs roughly 4.5 quadrillion kilograms. Snow isn't as dense as water. It varies and can be mostly air. Powdery snow might weigh only 100 kilograms per cubic meter, while heavily packed snow can reach 300 kilograms per cubic meter. So, based on these figures, the amount of space all Earth's snow would occupy is roughly 15 to 45,000 cubic kilometers depending on the density. For comparison, that's like piling tens of thousands of Mount Everests made entirely of frozen fluff. Let's assume the snow wizard makes the snowfall as a perfect cylinder with a radius of 10 kilometers. The base area would be about 3.14 times 10 to the power of 8 square meters. Dividing the total snow volume by this area gives the height. So, even compacted, the pile towers 48 kilometers into the sky. Powdery snow? A staggering 143 kilometers past the edge of space! But what would happen under all that weight? At the base, the pressure would reach 1,400 bar, greater than at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. But let's pause the Doom Tower idea for a moment. What if the snow wizard spread all this snow evenly across different countries? If it were spread evenly, it would bury entire nations under several meters of snow, five meters deep in the US, six and a half meters deep in Australia, taller than a house. But let's say it all landed in the center of Tokyo. Everything under the pile, roughly a 10 kilometer radius from the center, would be crushed flat in seconds. The base would compact into ice strong enough to resist even concrete crushing pressure. Friction and pressure would melt the lower layers and edges, producing rivers of slush that surge onward, causing devastation within a radius comparable to the distance from Tokyo to Yokohama, depending on the terrain. And if the collapse reached Tokyo Bay, it wouldn't be the slow melt that mattered, but the sudden displacement of trillions of tons of mass powerful enough to launch tsunamis across the bay and along the Japanese coast, hitting Yokohama, Chiba, and even parts of Sendai. But the vast bulk of the pile would remain frozen, towering over the city like a slightly terrifying, impractical snow cone. To melt all that snow would take the energy of 24,000 Hiroshima bombs. The Earth doesn't have that kind of heat just lying around, so most of the pile would simply linger for around 890 years based on the average solar energy absorbed by the Earth's surface and climate factors. Luckily, Earth keeps its snow spread out, and there are no snow wizards around. So the next time you see snowflakes drifting quietly past your window, just be glad they're not all headed to the same spot.